Okay, so we're going to start getting into some of this guy's videos and just see what he has to say on these portions. And we'll see if it holds any weight. First of all, we're going to go to the, uh, the Old Testament where we're using the exact same search. Now, it says the Father plus the Word, but there are no Old Testament mentions of Holy Ghost. So technically this is Holy Ghost as well, but it's not because there are no mentions of the Holy Ghost. So he's implying that technically, and he uses the Hebrew, we'll see in a second, and the total value of the the first and last letters in the Hebrew alphabet comes to 401. And because the Father plus the Word, which there's no capital W Word in the Old Testament, but he's implying a thing here in order to come to this total value of 401 and prove his false point as he's trying to teach the Trinity, calling it the Godhead. Let's continue watching. Ghost in the Old Testament. So for example, in the entire Bible, we have 777. If you just deselect everything and select Old Testament, 401. So what's the big deal about 401? Well, 401 is the sum of the first and the last letter in Hebrew numerics, it's the Aleph and the Tav. So Aleph and Tav, so Aleph is one and Tav is 400. 401 is the total value for- Okay, you remember going over everything? Gematria, which is setting a numerical value, value to something in and of itself is numerology. This is what he's doing. And then he's saying that, oh, it's not, it's not numerology. I'm not doing that. The guy is enchanting you and he's bewitching you by showing a false knowledge, having a false preface, trying to say, oh, well, this is basically the Holy Ghost then there because it's connected to the same number of times when the word, capital W word, is nowhere in the Old Testament. There's six total mentions with the capital W word, and we'll look at that later when we get to another video here. Let's continue. So th this, he's using Gematria right before you and trying to imply something while he's trying to teach the Trinity. And we'll see, this is a clip from the same video. Let's go ahead and listen, and you'll see the falsehood here. Three for some. I mean, I don't know how much perfect you could you could make it. Three is also God's perfect number, by the way. Where in scripture does it say that three is God's perfect number? He's gonna take, he's gonna quote John, uh, John 5, 7, and say these three are one. He's talking about the three parts that be of God father the soul the holy ghost the spirit and then jesus the son yes but he is the body the fullness of the godhead bodily dwelleth in christ jesus let's go to colossians chapter 2 verse 8 beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world okay it's an earthly knowledge a wisdom that is not actually given in scripture and not after christ for in him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The fullness of the Godhead only dwells in Christ Jesus, just as you have a body, soul, spirit, but your body, soul, and spirit are only full in your body. Okay, thank you. So continuing along, let's watch, and he, you'll see another falsehood. There, these three are one. The Godhead is made of three people, three persons. The Godhead, where, where's three people or three persons in scripture? It's nowhere, not referring to God anyway. And it's no, I mean, three, three persons or God and three persons, nowhere in scripture. He's about to say God the Father. Yeah, we'll see that in scripture. But God the Son and God the Holy Ghost is never mentioned in scripture. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Okay, so he's got these empty thoughts and opinions based on implication, and then he's using these numerical patterns in order to teach a false doctrine, a false way that is not according to scripture, that is not plainly spoken in the word of God. <clears throat> but he gets all these different patterns, goes to Gematria, finds these different values and so forth, which while we're, while we're talking about this, okay, he, on page uh, 343, He's using gematria and there and he's adding up the value of, of the vowels and the consonants and 
Okay, in the 1611 compared to the, the modern King James Bible, which he's saying, oh, because it says have been, that's a U, that's that's a that's a vowel, not a consonant, but it's still pronounced as heaven. Okay, in the 1611, it was a Gothic font. The the U's look like V's, the V's look like U's, the S's look like F's sometimes. And then if you look at this verse right here, Revelation 22, verse 1, let's get it to focus. Okay. Jesus it has what we would consider an I. And so he's coming to a completely different value because the 1611 is using an I for the J. It's just the font. It's the text that was used. It's still pronounced as Jesus. We're not saying heun, it's heaven. And we're not saying Ius, it's Jesus. Okay. But this guy, he's using all these different weird things. And just to prove that, yes, God, the Son, is nowhere in Scripture. Let's look up. Okay. God, the Son. Okay. Nowhere in Scripture. How about God, the Holy Spirit? Holy Spirit. Nope. Nowhere in Scripture. What about God, the Holy Ghost? Okay. Nowhere in Scripture. He's following after a different Jesus, okay? Plain and simple. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity, the simplicity that is in Christ. But this man is going about with all these different numbers and trying to add these different values to things. And he's teaching something that is nowhere to be found in Scripture. And he's deterring you away from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, and that's exactly what he's preaching, if it's the second person of God and it's not the, it's not the fullness of God in Jesus, it's a different Jesus, whom we have not preached. Or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. And that's exactly what Brandon Peterson is doing with all these numbers. He's teaching a false way, a false Jesus, and a false God. <clears throat> Got a few more videos that I'd like to show and go through. Okay. In the New Testament, if we look at the most common alternate names to the Father, the Word, and Holy Ghost, so the Father is most known as God. The Word is most known as Jesus. Holy Ghost is most known as Holy Spirit. Okay, pausing there for a second. So this is how he's getting to his total number of 777. Supposing that the Word in the entire Bible, 469 times is, is it mentioned, but the capital W Word is only mentioned six times in Scripture. Okay, when we come here and we look at the matter, and so the lowercase w, word of God, just saying this, the lowercase word of God is the written spoken word of God, okay? The lowercase word. But the capital W word is God manifest, okay? That's the flesh of Jesus Christ, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, okay? What we see in John chapter 1 and in 1 John chapter 5 and in Revelation 19. We'll show those here in just a moment. But here looking at all of Scripture, Okay, the word, uh, we should actually look at exact phrases, that way we get a honest look at it. <clears throat> the word, okay, all these different times when it says the word of Moses, that's the word of Moses, not of God. The word of the Lord, this is the spoken word of God, right? <clears throat> According to the word of the Lord, okay? And all these different things, yes, the Lord is Jesus Christ. And it's his spoken word, just as if I speak a word unto my wife and I tell her, hey, I need you to go and set, hang out the clothes today, but she does not go and hang out the clothes. What is she doing? She's disobeying me because she disobeyed my word. In the same sense, the word of God is to be taken. Okay, the only times that capital W word of God, as I said, John chapter 1. Verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, capital, and the Word was with God, capital, and the Word was God. Uh-oh, I'm counting. There's three times. Again, counting is not evil, 
But when you try to make an intricate pattern of this and you become superstitious on these super on these little patterns and so forth, then you run into problems and you're no longer abiding lawfully according to the word of God. Well, here we are, John 1.14. Okay, here's the fourth time that the word is capitalized and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Okay, the fifth time that it's mentioned in scripture with a capital W, 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. And the and there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. Okay, so we have five total mentions of the Word, capital, so far. The last and sixth time, but if you're superstitious, oh, six, and these three are one. Oh, no, wait, hold on, there's a weird, no, that, that, that can't be right. <clears throat> I'll show you something. Okay, Revelation 19, 13. Okay, and he was clothed with, clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name was the Word of God. Okay, and that's the sixth time that the Word is capitalized. What's really interesting, okay, you remember how I mixed Brandon Peterson's work with Ian W. Bollinger? I mean, he, it's not that I'm mixing it, but this guy is following what this guy has already done once before. He's just putting a different cover on, cover on it. <clears throat> Check this out. Okay, on page 286 of E.W. Bollinger's book, okay, we read here, focus. Okay, the number of 666 has another remarkable property. Okay. And then he says they they may be arranged in the form of a square with six, uh, the, the, the whole equation, right? With six figures each way, so that the sum of each six figures in any direction shall be another significant trinity. One, one, one. <clears throat> Nothing to see here, folks. Nothing to see here at all. When he's teaching a trinity, he's teaching of a, a devil. Okay, There's nothing in scripture that teaches of the trinity. None of the terminology, triune God, Trinity itself, uh, God in three persons, God the Son, God the Father. Yes, God the Father is in there, but God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, nowhere in Scripture. As well as to, to speak when it says, oh, Jesus is not the Father, or Jesus is not the Holy Ghost. Okay, those terms are nowhere found in Scripture. It's implied by the wisdom of man. Coming back to the matter, <clears throat> let's hear out the rest of what he says here. So this is how it shows up in the Bible. And this is how it's most often spoken in churches. Gives you a total of 777 plus 777 plus 777 mentioned. Okay. And so he's saying that the word is most commonly spoken as being Jesus. But again, I told you, yeah, the lowercase w word of God is not the capital W word of God. One prime example of this is if we go to Psalm chapter 12. Psalm chapter 12, and we'll close here. Verse 6, the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. Okay. The lowercase w word of God needs to be preserved by God. The capital W word of God, Jesus Christ himself, is eternal. He is God. He does not need to be preserved. He is the I am that I am. But the lowercase w word of God needs to be preserved. Okay. So, again, this guy, Brandon Peterson, he's enchanting and enticing with things that are not scriptural. Using a way of divination through these intricate patterns. Okay, and he's wanting these intricate patterns to speak to him as it was on page four of his book. Okay, if, if there are numerical patterns that verify God's ins inspiration of the original tongues, what if there are patterns in this Bible that is speaking to me and signify, sanctify me? Okay, the guy is looking at something other than the word of God to instruct him. He's looking at a deeper proof. He's divining, okay, to see what he can see deeper within. I guess that's that then. Thank you for watching, and may God be with you in your studies, that you may continue to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing, not 
with divination and math, but dividing what is what in the word of God as you read and accept it to say what it means. God bless.